This mini episode of PredictoCast is sponsored in part by our glorious Patreon supporters. If you want to support us on Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash PredictoCast. Thanks very much to Alexandra, Andrew Walker, Beth Aron, Daniel Ifland, Felipe Sobrero, Gigi Launchbaugh, Jessica lynch Jonely, Justin Talbot, The Kill by Kill Podcast, Kip Reed, Ronnie Gardaki, and Tyler Petty. Thanks so much for your support. I couldn't live without you. I would literally die. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to a mini episode of PredictoCast, the podcast where we predict a movie storyline after watching only the first 10 minutes. I'm Josh and with me as always is Skinner. Hey Skinner. Hey Josh. Hey everybody. On these mini episodes, we like to get the predictions started early by revealing the name of the film we'll be discussing and then predicting the movie story based solely on the title, and we are smack dab in the middle of Larry Cohen month. Uh, It's his birthday this month, uh, July 15th, I believe, and uh, so we are covering Larry Cohen films. We've had a lot of fun covering his work in the past. We had a lot of fun last week talking about Deadly Illusion, Um, and next week on the show, we are covering something that is kind of, I, I think, at least t- title-wise, connected to Deadly Illusion, special effects. I love this name, A, because it reminds me of FX, and to a lesser degree, FX2. <laughs> also, it makes me think, we, we talk about like, those those titles do have a certain kin to them. Yeah. And yet, and yet why was that last movie called Deadly Illusion? I don't know. You have to go back and listen to our uh, to our episode on that one. It's it's a it's a wild ride uh, that we have there. But special effects again, you know, we like our we like our provocative titles around here. We like titles that sort of set up an idea. With Deadly Illusion, we thought, oh, maybe there's an evil magician or something that's involved. Uh, that is not the case with that film. Um, but special effects. It sort of draws to mind kind of the the same thing of like things are not as they appear, which is kind of a current that runs through a lot of his movies that we've done where our our sort of central character thinks one thing and then finds out that they have been misled in some way. I'm going to be very upset if we go in this movie and and the special effects, the titular special effects is one character wears a wig (laughs) and a fake nose oh Uh, you know what i thought what if this is the story of that uh random prosthetics guy that we met for one scene when he was a dead body in deadly illusion and this is his movie (laughs) well that's what i was thinking also was like if you were doing some sort of mystery thriller which a lot of his stuff is right yeah um it starts that way and then it builds into something else. Yeah. So, uh, generally into something that's either a larger conspiracy or a weirder thing or just kind of branches out into a crazy, crazy situation where you're wondering why is the protagonist still even bothering with this? Because they generally never have to. There's no there's no thread <laughs> pulling them along at times. Uh, but what I, I was – you mentioned that guy with prosthetics. When you – if you were making an, an, an older – and I'm, I'm talking about 30 – 35 years ago a uh, movie that we call special effects. You're making a, a thriller about that. And say you wanted to like place it in the world of somebody who does special effects. You have a guy who makes prosthetics, someone who makes machinery that does special effects, special things, special things for like movies or shows. Yeah. If you did it now, we like murder at Lucas arts ranch. And like, it's be a <laughs> bunch of dudes with Silicon graphics and fucking hitting each other with keyboards. <laughs> uh yeah that's what it would be i i like the idea of it being set in the the world like a film world which would be kind of fun because i imagine that would allow larry cohen to get a little meta it would allow him to like you know make poke some fun at the film industry by setting it within a film set and what if like 
what if it's like a weird uh, all right here go go with me on this one it's like a weird boy who cried wolf kind of thing where there's a guy on a film set who is in charge of the special effects but he likes making really um gruesome realistic like dead bodies that he hides around people's dressing rooms and around the set to freak people out cuz he's a bit of a practical joker and then with practical effects with practical effects exactly he's a practical effects joker and, <laughs> and then someone does die and he discovers it and he tries to tell people but nobody believes him because they think that he's just messing with them again so then he has to sort of figure out who the killer is on the film set but also th- there and then people start to suspect him um and they think oh well he's so used to making all of these fake dead bodies he decided he's going to make a real one and he started killing people and then it turns out it's, it's a, it Sometimes it is fake. Sometimes it's real. And it's actually by Big Pharma, who's <laughs> using these parts of hu- real humans to research diabetes. Yes, diabetes I, I do, and also get people addicted to heroin. I do like that, though. I like the idea of, of someone who's in special effects having to deal with special effects gone wrong. Like no one trusting whether something is a real hand or a fake hand because it's yeah. a real hand. That that would be that would be pretty good. What if? And I don't know what what year did this come out? I have no idea. I don't know anything about it other than the title. So if it came out after 1993, what if it was the story about the death of Brandon Lee? Oh God, no! <laughs> no, it all takes place on the set of The Crow. <laughs> no, it cannot do that. Please, I really Why hope ha- that's not the case. Has has that happened yet? Uh, no, like what a movie a dramatization of the death on that set. Yeah. You know, just him being, sh- being shot by a blank and dying. I mean, it, it'd be hard to stretch it out over two hours. No, I don't think they've done that. I mean, it might've been dramatized in another thing, like a, an actor killed on set, you know, because of a, 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 a negligence law or, or a, a law accident. Order episode <laughs> torn from the headlines. I mean, that is possible. Um, I mean that's that's a terrible thing that happened to him, but yeah, I mean it, it. Maybe if this did come out after that, they could be they could reference it perhaps, or they could reference something similar to it. But well, I don't. I mean, someone, again, I I think this is the '80s, but I'm not totally positive. So there's there's not as much of a chance of this taking place on a set of a movie where someone gets shot when they're supposed to be fake shot and then big empty by a Stone Temple Pilots plays. <laughs> I mean, it could still be that situation. It could be what I said, but it could be about. Uh, special effects gone wrong that then kills someone. Here's another idea. What if it's a haunted film set and the special effects keep malfunctioning and people die? So someone does accidentally get like crushed by something that was supposed to be e- easy for them to escape, but something went wrong. It, it tripped too early, and so they get they get crushed by a chandelier. I don't know. Or maybe like they're in rooms some with like spikes in the side that come together. <laughs> yes. Well, I was going to say a chandelier because they're in like a Victorian set or something. Or it's uh, you know a a, a a blank misfires or um, someone puts on like a latex mask, but then it adheres to their flesh and they can't get it off, and so That's they have to like terrible. tear their skin off. <laughs> Here, all I ask of this movie and. It's it's not much, but I I I I want it to happen. Is that one of the special effects in special effects is a robot, <laughs> and when that robot goes bad, its eyes glow red. Oh yes, I hope we do get an evil robot. That would be that would work if it were like a haunted film set. So they have a special effects of a robot that's supposed to come out and like push someone down, and this the the haunted robot like comes out and just jabs their hand right through a person's stomach. <laughs> it's like it's like that the the robot from Rocky going just going rogue and instead of it deciding it's going to punch the humans and punches Polly's heads off. Yeah, instead of instead of wanting to make love to Polly, it punches his head off. Oh, the okay. last thing it says before he punches him, happy birthday Polly. <laughs> happy birthday Polly. Um I want I want to broaden our our ideas on this though because it might not take place on a film set and if it what doesn't if it take place take... on the what if it takes place on this okay this would be a film set but it's not really a film set but it's instead the set where they faked the moon landing 
Oh, okay. I like that idea. What if that comes out in the course of the movie? Is that like this special effects wizard, this guy who who uh, is like the top dog in the special effects world was involved in faking the moon landing? What if like we we the whole time we're like the first 40 minutes, we think we're investigating a murder on the moon. But turns out it's a, it's a studio lot in Burbank. <laughs> I mean, that's totally likely. But what I was going to say is, if this doesn't take place in the film world, in the world of film or television special effects, what could that title refer to? Ma- magicians. Of course, okay. I would have thought Back. Deadly Illusion would have had something to do with magicians. Yes, it should have had something to do with magic. It didn't. Yeah. No, it didn't. But, what, but- man, what? how how do you never cast Billy D. Williams as a fucking ma- magician? <laughs> You're a musician. He could be either. He could, he could do a stage act, have big things behind him, magic happening. I would like I would like a mu- <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> having a hard time saying this musician, uh, which is a musician magician hybrid where they rip an awesome guitar solo and then pick a car and then tell you to pick a card. <laughs> But like they, they put, they point their their the neck of the guitar of the, of the audience, like you know, just the solo is screaming, and suddenly it's just shooting cards everywhere. Maybe <laughs> scarves. If you think about it, what is what was the charm of Prince? He was a ma- musician, but he kind of looked like a magician. <laughs> is that the hardest wor- combo of words to say together? <laughs> magician, I'm musician. Doing, I'm, I'm glad we're doing it on a podcast where everyone can hear it and be very, very annoyed about it. I I challenge any of our listeners out there, start a band. I mean, it's going to be really hard to do gigs right now, but just do YouTube shows or or release a demo that you record in your basement and name yourself magician musician. (laughs) I mean, really nail it on the head (laughs) for my next trick and next song (laughs) for my next trick. A guitar solo. <laughs> That's what they sound like. <laughs> I have no musical talent. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I don't know where else we can go. This has to take place on a film set, right? Like it, it can't, does not. It can't it, be called special effects and not have something to do with movies. I hope that like we don't think it has anything to do with movies until about fifty five minutes in. <laughs> We're waiting the entire runtime of like when is it going to get to a film set, and then finally they show up and there's fifteen minutes left. When are they going to get to the fireworks factory? Um, <laughs> if this took place at a fireworks factory, I'm all in. By the way, I mean that's kind of a form of special effects in a way. There's fire the, involved. Is there is there a, is there a better special effect? Oh, what if it's not? What if it's not a film set? But what if it's like at a stunt show? <gasps> Those are like special stunt, effects. The stunt show at Universal Studios, the Indiana <laughs> Jones show. Yes. And it goes and it's it's a stunt show. They can do like a generic one, like a Wild West one or like a, a secret agent one. Um, and something goes wrong and like people are getting crushed by boats and boulders. And like I, I love that the, the consistent thread through all our ideas is people getting crushed. Destroyed. <laughs> it's people, something goes wrong. People get crushed. Well, I mean, that is. I think that's what you need for a successful film is you need <laughs> you need something to go wrong and someone to be crushed. I have like I swear to God, if, if if you have a movie where something goes wrong and somebody gets crushed, everyone who leaves the movie, the first thing they were talking about was like, man, that scene where that thing went wrong and that person got crushed. That's what they're talking about. <laughs> They'll never forget it. Unless you put it in every movie, which I would every time. I just did some calculations, and I think um, if if my if my math is correct, which I think it is, I think ninety six percent of all films made feature someone being crushed after something goes wrong. So I mean, it's a pretty good uh, average, uh, pretty good bet that we might get that in special effects. Yeah, I think so. I think we're I think we're good on this one. I think this is a very successful mini episode. (laughs) <laughs> I, I i now rate now that we watch have, watch this be about a fucking bank or something oh it's about a about a bank or a fucking comic book artist um <laughs> but like now that we have movie rankings for the for the dog movies on over on our other sister show hot diggity dog like subscribe for that show over there 
Um, I'm just saying that out loud so we remember to do it next time we actually record. Uh, <laughs> I now I now want to put at the end of all the minis of this one of, of was this a successful mini? Yes, this was. <laughs> we'll forget that by the time we record the next one. Of course we will. We rec- we record early in the month both minis, and then <laughs> by the time we get back to it the next month we forget how to do these things. <laughs> well, I think that that is the perfect place to wrap up this mini episode so that we can go watch special effects and we can talk about it next week on the show. But until then, I've been Josh. I've been Skinner. And we predict you'll join us. Don't get crushed. <laughs> If you like the show, subscribe, rate, and review us over at Apple Podcasts. We're on Twitter and Instagram at PredictoCast, and you can find our entire back catalog at PredictoCast.com. Our theme music is by Kyle Sledge. Find more of his work at SoundCloud.com slash Geist Music. To get monthly bonus content, sign up at Patreon.com slash PredictoCast. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.